Recently, I put out a video explaining the nuances of Patrick Bet David's MLM company called PHP. That video caused all of the PBD fanboys and MLM apologists to deploy a level of cope that I rarely get to see. So today, I thought it would be fun to go over some of the most common hate comments I received on my videos, not just on that Patrick video, but on all of my videos. You sound envious on what Patrick has being able to do. He has worked very hard and has spent years growing his brands. He is not doing anything different than any other brand in the market. Be gracious and promote success, not hate. Very sad with all the exclamation marks. This is like a Trump tweet. So sad, so disgraceful, frankly. Okay, envy and hate. These are the two things I'm being accused of in this comment. Let's start with envy. I hear this all the time, you know, you're just jealous because they have more money than you. That's usually the thing that they say. I don't even know how these people logic that out because every celebrity has more money than me. Why am I not making videos about every person who makes more money than me? Make it make sense. He's not doing anything different than any other brand in the market. I mean, I explain that in my video so in depth, it's not even funny. I swear these people that make these comments don't even watch the videos. Be gracious and promote success, not hate. Ironically, that is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to steer people towards something they'll be successful in by first helping them to not get scammed by a multi-level marketing company. That is not hate. Very sad. It is very sad, Big Pappy Fern. I hope uh, I fix my broke mindset soon. Okay, here's another one. Ha ha ha, making videos on YouTube is a pyramid scheme. 100% of people are losing their time watching videos to make you rich by using the work of other people and you want to give us lessons about how the world works. The modern world is a Ponzi scheme, which is the most famous sort of pyramid schemes and the biggest economies around the world already know that. So stop scamming people by wasting their times reinforcing their failure. We all know that mathematically is impossible. Network marketing is the future. MLM is compensation plan. There is no guarantee and everyone who joins real network marketing company know that already. You've been scammed by other people. Go take your vengeance from them, not for the industry in its whole. <sighs> this guy is allergic to using a period in his sentence. Not even a period, like how about a semicolon? Can I get a semicolon? Crazy. I mean, just the writing skills of these comments so far goes to show you the, the caliber of, of brain power that we're dealing with from the people who leave these comments. Making videos on YouTube is a pyramid scheme. Well, <laughs> no, it's not. If you watch my content on YouTube, it doesn't cost you anything to watch it. And you're not recruiting other people to watch it in order to fulfill some income goal that I've promised you. I didn't tell you, I didn't tell my subscribers, hey, if you share this video with five people, you're all gonna be rich. But that is true, I should say now, that is true, he's right. Definitely share this video with five people. Network marketing is the future. I love this one. Network marketing, MLM, claims to be direct sales. And in the book, Ponzinomics by Robert Fitzpatrick, he establishes not only is MLM not direct sales, but true direct sales has been a largely obsolete business model for a long, long time. When was the last time you saw somebody who is selling something like door to door or in person. MLM claims to have millions of these direct sellers all around the world. Network marketing is the future in a world of Amazon, Target, Costco. I should stop even bringing up Target, Costco, Walmart because I should just use Amazon really because even brick and mortar stores are having to adapt to like an online marketplace world. So it's, it's just insane to suggest that network marketing is the future, people buying directly from other people is the future. It's, it's so crazy. Do these people think that Patrick B. David is going to like fly down from Mount Olympus on his cloud and be like, thanks for backing me up on that guy's YouTube comments. Here's $10,000, make it make sense. Okay, this is on one of the shorts that was cut from the Patrick B. David video, just giving a little bit of an overview about how Patrick B. David made his money. It's not the full explanation. It's not the full context. So keep that in mind. Funny, I only watched this because PBD was in the title. So you're saying he piggybacked off of someone or something else's name for content. Now you're using his name and clips of his content in your videos to make the content. Maybe I could react to your content to make content of my own. It's contentception. I guess my YouTube channel really is a pyramid scheme. When people like this see content about someone they like, now all of a sudden the content creator who is making that video is piggybacking off of that person's name for content. There's no world where, in these people's minds, there's no world where I'm actually exposing something that is the truth that might change their opinion on someone that they already have an established liking for and they can view it objectively and go, okay, yeah, actually I do see what he's explaining here. Here's the evidence he provided, blah, blah, blah. They only can see it as hate 
and piggybacking. I want to ask these people, do you think that whoever made the documentary about Bill Cosby and Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein, do you think those people were just piggybacking off of the names of more famous people? It's craziness. And even if they were, even if they realize, oh yeah, this is a hot topic, let me make a documentary about this. If they're contributing positively to the world by bringing awareness to this story of like criminality and harm to people, as a preventative measure, then why would that be a bad thing? It's just pure confirmation bias. Just stop it. Pyramids are illegal. PHP was purchased and is partnered with Citigroup. You think you did more due diligence than Citigroup? GTFOH. I love this one because it implies that just because something is illegal means it couldn't possibly be happening. Do you think you did more due diligence than Citigroup? I think the problem here is not that Citigroup didn't do more or less due diligence than I did. I think the problem is that Citigroup, along with everybody else in the corporate world and the political world, knows the truth, which is that MLMs are pyramid schemes. But unfortunately, due to political lobbying and political influence buying, they're legal. So if they're making money, who cares? That's how the people at the tops of these companies think on a corporate level. It's about maximizing profits. And if they're not doing anything that is illegal, you know, pretend in some alternate timeline that killing people, maybe not pointing a gun at them and shooting it, but through some more covert method with extra steps, that killing people was legal. Even though we had all the data to show that the end result of people getting involved with this thing was them dying. If it was legal, companies would do it. Corporations would do it and they would say, well, it's legal. These people don't care. You're conflating legality with morality and ethics. Everyone knows the truth. Well, apparently not everyone. If he scams people, why he is not in jail, bro? <laughs> Do you think that as soon as someone commits a crime, they magically teleport to jail? That there is some genie watching them every minute of the day, and as soon as they commit the crime, the genie snaps his fingers and goes, up oh, jail. People can get away with things for a long time without having to face any consequences. This is like I talked about before, the Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby thing, the great example. When it comes to financial crimes, it's the same thing. Think about Bernie Madoff, right? I talk about Bernie Madoff all the time. He ran a Ponzi scheme for 30 years. This is one of the most, if not the most, well-documented, well-reported on Ponzi schemes in history. Books, documentaries, movies have all been made covering the Bernie Madoff Ponzi scheme. Bernie Madoff was the chairman of the NASDAQ. You wanna talk about due diligence and you wanna talk about, oh, if the government knew about it, they would be in jail and blah, blah, blah. The government knows and they are choosing not to do anything about it because it's good for their business. They get paid to not do anything about it. This is a simple, as it could be, follow the money. If he scams people, why is he not in jail? Well, just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it won't happen. And I sure hope it does in the case of Patrick. I mean, that guy is on another level. Of all the flavors in the world, you chose salty and you use his name for views you'd never have without it. Pathetic. The irony of this is that Patrick has built his entire media empire and all of his content off of other people, interviewing people who have interesting stories. You know, he had the whole saga of interviewing the mob guys. That was his whole brand for a while. Interviewing other interesting people to build his own brand. You know, there's that TikTok sign. It's like, it's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. And a lot of these people, as I explain in my video about Patrick and PHP, you know, Shaq, Kobe, Jordan Peterson, these are people who were paid to show up at these PHP events. So if you wanna talk about using people, how about we talk about Patrick using People who need an opportunity, people who are desperate and struggling, who have joined his MLM and paid exorbitant amounts of money to go to these events, giving that money to Patrick so that Patrick can then give some of that money to someone like Jordan Peterson to speak at his event, where he can then post that as content and get even more people into the brand of Patrick with David. There's layers, literally multi-level layers to Patrick's using of people. So don't talk about uh, you use his name for views you'd never have without it. Bro, go look at my channel. This is the first video I've made about Patrick but David. Go look at the trajectory of my channel. I was doing fine before I made a video about Patrick. Chill. Here we go. This one is on my video confronting an Amway recruiter. Why don't you get a life instead of recording strangers' convos? This college student is an adult who can make his, her own decisions. <laughs> I, again, I swear these people don't even watch the videos that they're commenting on because if you watch this video, you would know I don't actually record anyone else's conversation. I only recorded my conversation with this Amway recruiter. The irony of saying, why don't you get a life instead of doing this is that this video came about, and you would know this if you watch the video, this video came about when I was literally just 
chilling at a coffee shop with a friend, living my life. I didn't go there to film a video or record this. I was literally just like hanging out with a friend. So it's hilarious. This person's telling me to get a life, but I can't even go about my life and go to a coffee shop with a friend without witnessing a pyramid scheme pitch. It just goes to show how all-encompassing and ubiquitous multi-level marketing is. Because I know the signs, I know what to look for, I know how to spot it, I can't go anywhere without putting together little pieces that show how MLM is literally all around us. MLM controls so much more than you would even expect. And the second part, this college student is an adult who can make his or her own decisions. Well, again, if you watch the video, you would know that the college student was a her, so I don't know why you're putting his slash her own decision. But the problem with this whole narrative of like, oh, people who get scammed, it's their fault. They should have known better. You know, they made the decision. You can't blame anyone else. These people are being deceived. These people are making decisions to join decisions based on a lie. You cannot say that they consented to it because they didn't have all of the information they needed to be able to consent. I'll give you an example. If I offered you a glass of water, like the one I'm drinking from this mug from alwaysmarkomerch.com, use code goons for a discount. If I offer you a glass of water and you drink it, that was a fair exchange. I gave you water, you wanted water, you drank it. Everybody knew what the deal was. Now let's pretend I say, do you want a glass of water? but I didn't tell you that I actually put poison in it before I offered it to you. And then you drink it. Can I now go, oh, well, you made the decision. They made the decision to drink water, not to drink poison. I left that part out. I lied to them. This is called a lie of omission. This is exactly the type of deception that people in MLMs use so routinely that they don't even notice they're doing it. Hey, I like those shoes. You didn't like their fucking shoes. You're just faking authenticity to try to pitch them. Oh yeah, I'm with a financial services company that helps people. You're in a pyramid scheme. Say the name of the company and on and on and on. In the case of this Amway recruiter, it was, oh, I like your iPad. And then they'll invite you to a party. It's not a party. You think you're going to a party. You agreed to a party. And then you find out it's actually a presentation, a pitch for a pyramid scheme. That is not an example of someone who is making their own decision. That is deception, it's lying, it's scamming, it's fraud. I've got comments from people on my channel saying they thought it was a party, they thought they were going to have coffee, they thought they were going on a date. Oh, the date is the worst one when like a guy goes with flowers to meet up with some girl and he walks inside and there's already a hundred people there. Oh my God. I would be so fucking livid if that happened to me. And to balance out the negativity of this video, I wanna say there is an overwhelmingly larger amount of positive comments on my videos than there are negative comments. You know, rarely does someone come up to me in real life who doesn't like me and say as much. Every person I've ever met for the most part who has recognized me from YouTube is nothing but like kind and gracious. And same goes for the comments. These negative comments don't bother me. Like I get so many comments every day, people saying like, thank you for this, you're doing God's work, you're a hero, too much. And of course it means so much to me. I mean, that's why I keep doing this because I can see from people writing long paragraphs, telling me their heartfelt stories about loss and deception and losing friends and relatives and loved ones to MLMs or losing their own way by getting sucked into an MLM. I, I know that I'm doing a good thing and I just wanna thank everybody that's uh, watching this and everyone who subscribes to me and shares my videos and supports me because it's because of y'all that I'm doing this and that I'm able to keep doing this. And that goes double for the people who support me on Patreon. Sorry, sun is in my eyes. Or are a member on YouTube. I do a bad job of plugging my Patreon, but you can join my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. I have 93,000 subscribers. If everyone pledged $1 a month, they each probably wouldn't notice that $1 is missing at the end of each month. You know, it probably wouldn't bankrupt my subscribers. Theoretically, on paper, I could be making $93,000 a month that I could be using to fight multi-level marketing companies and pay for lawsuits and keep things moving, hypothetically. But yeah, if you support me on Patreon, you'll get access to all of the new content early. I post things on Patreon that I don't post anywhere else updates, etc., and it's truly going towards a good cause, fighting the evil of multi-level marketing. Thank you. Don't join an MLM.